What's up everybody, 915 Mang here getting out of the house today. Took the family out to Sitting Bull Falls outside of uh, Carlsbad, New Mexico. This one fall right here is ran by the National Park Service and it's a pretty nice place to go if you're in the area. The entrance to the park is $5. It's free if you're active duty or if you're a disabled veteran. Um, the last video that I did, I showed you that my calc washer had a, well it was just a big mess. Um, right here as you can see is just a residue. I decided to go ahead and empty out my auto top off and use a shop vac. I should have did this a long time ago. As you can see, I have a filter sock on a bucket, um, just pumping into the uh, bucket, right? But uh, with the filter sock, it was just a mess. It was getting clogged up and it wasn't really effective. Um, so I got my shop vac, put it in there, and I just vacuumed away. I plan on vacuuming out my sump, especially my return section where my pump is at. Um, on my next water change, I'm just gonna use the shop vac and clean it out real good. As you can see, that's the residue from the calc washer. It is a huge mess. Um, shop vacs, if you didn't know, can uh, vacuum clean uh, water. You just have to take the bag out. Another big thing that I've done lately is I busted out the Aquatic Life T5 fixture. Um, it's kind of a mess, but it's really color coded. You got the two uh, different colors and you just line them up together. Um, for mounting them, uh, this light is pretty cool because you can it everything is in the track but I just got some uh, canopy hinges that I had before ran it right across the light and then put the screws in already from the reflectors I'm a huge fan of uh, the T5 LED combo all, otherwise known as a uh, LED hybrid but if you try to buy an LED hybrid with T5s it's going to be ridiculous um, the whole retro kit that I bought Back in the day, it was like 100 bucks plus the reflectors. I only need two bulbs because I think two bulbs is going to be plenty. It's still going to supplement my tank. And the uh, light bulbs that I'm using are Coral Plus, uh, the ATI brand. In fact, these bulbs right here, I'll replace them later on. But they're from the original hybrid that I had um, in my last video when I was using um, AI Souls. In the video, the tank looks a little dim, but that's because I was messing around with the exposure on my uh, video camera. Um, I do have the T5s on and the LEDs. At this point I am running them at a uh, 40% at the peak and then back down to 30. Um, just the pop from the LEDs is awesome but the T5 uh, you can see all the polyp extensions are really good. I'm still gonna have some good growth. Uh, I was just gonna run it uh, solo with just the LEDs but I decided to go ahead and hook up the T5s just because you know, I'm a strong believer in the T5 and LED combo. I ended up spending the day gluing down frags onto the Live Rock. The glue that I like to use is the BSI glue. It's the best glue, cheap glue, and it works really good. Um, in the last contest, I ended up having to send out like two glues per person because the U.S. Postal Service, it just didn't get through. Um, they, I know they sent some glues to Atlanta, which is their last and found, and uh, that sucked. Uh, we might do another contest later on, but for now, uh, I'm just going to postpone that, I guess. The dosing is going pretty good. The only thing that I'm dosing right now is alkalinity. I'm using the two-part BRS, which is really like three-part because it's not including the magnesium. Um, I might do a video later on on mixing that stuff, but uh, pretty much if you want to look at that, check out the bulk resupply how-to, and you'll see it. Um, one thing... When it, when I was mixing the stuff up, it was pretty cool because uh, the chemical reaction that was happening inside the bottles, the bottles got really hot when you started adding like all the contents that you need to make alkalinity. Alkalinity got really hot, magnesium, and then calcium. They all got pretty hot. Another thing that I'm dosing right now is vinegar. You can do vodka dosing, you could do vod uh, bio pellets. But I'm just doing vinegar. It costs like a dollar something, two dollars max for a whole gallon, and uh, I'm just doing 10 ml. Um, now with that vinegar, there's like a chart and on the forums like a formula on how to do it. But I'm just doing 10 10 ml, and that's about it. And it seems to be working out pretty good because my skimmer is pulling some really super dark uh, crap out of it. But like I said, there's a whole formula on that and how to do it. I'm not really going to do go like crazy or anything like that. I'm just going to try it out 
10 ml seems to be doing uh, the job because I went over to a buddy's house. I took him some frags. He was testing out his uh, tank for phosphates and he used the water in my bag to test my water for me. And he told me that my phosphates were pretty low. So, you know, just go from there. And 10 ml, like once a day is not a whole lot to be carbon dosing. You're actually you're supposed to be dosing more vinegar. Another thing that's been going on is my anemones. One of my anemones has just been moving all over the place. Um, I've taken them off of the rock, off my Tonga rock with all my sticks. And I had to use a sea squirt to uh, take them out. Um, what I did was just kept on squirting his foot, squirting his foot. And eventually this little guy let go. This one was a uh, super pain in the butt to uh, take off. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep my eye on him. If he decides to keep moving towards the Tonga rock that I have up there with all my sticks, uh, I'm going to snatch him up and put him back on the floor. Um, he's going to stay on the floor. I don't want him up there by my monoporas or my sticks or anything like that because anemones do have a bad sting. Also, the Aptasia that I have in my tank, that one peppermint shrimp didn't do anything. In fact, I don't know what happened to him. So I'm going to get another peppermint shrimp. I'm going to go to the LFS and uh, probably pick two up, maybe three up. One for the uh, little 24-gallon all-in-one tank that I just picked up and two for the 120-gallon tank because that Aptasia is starting to sting the crap out of um, my corals. I ended up picking up a new piece of equipment. Some of you who watch uh, Pelfrey on YouTube, go check him out. Cool dude. Talk to him like on the daily. But uh, he was selling an RW15, and I decided, hey, I wanted to get a second RW for this tank. I'm going to run one as a primary and one as a secondary, since they have that wireless sink. Uh, I did try him out, but unfortunately, he sent me the uh, wrong magnet. Uh, I wasn't going to say nothing, but uh, he went ahead and told on himself. Another cool thing is these Velcro tie straps. He sent it to me for free. Appreciate that, brother. And uh, I'm going to be using them. I've already been using them, as you can see, um, in my sump section, and I highly recommend them over zip ties. I've been talking about getting a new return pump. Uh, this is for sure not a re new return pump. This is the uh, return pump that came from my SCA cube. Uh, I wanted to put it on there, see how it did. I had the Eheim Compact 3000, and it did okay, but it just uh, pretty dirty from all the calc washer in there. I still want to go ahead and upgrade to a JBO or something like that, some DC kind of uh, return pump, but at the moment I can't do it uh, just because of, you know, other life priorities, I guess. Uh, school's going to be starting up for the kids and stuff like that. So, you know, I got to send them to school with some uh, new gear and all that school supplies, things like that. I want you to go ahead and take a look at the sump section right where my return pump is at. Um, you'll notice that it's pretty dirty. There's sand and things like that. And there's sand in there because I had a filter sock when I was siphoning out the uh, cyano from my sand bed. Um, I ended up coming out of the filter sock and just making a huge mess. So I'm going to get empty it out on my next water change and then use the uh, shop vac to clean it all out. It's also been a while since I cleaned out my gyri, so I put it in a bucket with the vinegar. The uh, same vinegar that I used to clean my RW and uh, my return pump for my Eheim. I just reuse this stuff. I also cleaned up my flipper magnet. If you guys don't have a flipper, I highly recommend you get one. They're awesome and they do a good job. So since I uh, used all this vinegar, I'm going to go ahead and clean out all my stuff. The Eheim needed a little bit more attention because the inside where the impeller goes was super corroded. In fact, it's still sitting in vinegar right now. The uh, shaft of the impeller is also being cleaned out really good. Uh, just all kinds of crap in it. Um, that hard calcification right there, as you can see, doesn't even want to come off. So it's going to stay in the vinegar, especially since I don't even need it right now. And uh, it'll just be, I'll just use it to uh, fill up my auto top-off container and things like that. I took some uh, a cheap little Walmart hacksaw. It's not even a good quality hacksaw. It's like $7 at the most. Had some uh, dry rock laying around, and the reason I'm cutting it is I'm going to use this for frag plugs. I'm also going to use this to make uh, shelves and drill holes and just plug it up for like the chalices and things like that. Um, really easy to do. I was really surprised on how easy um, this was, this whole project was. And especially if you have uh, wet 
live rock, this uh, hacksaw will cut through there easy, just like a hot butter knife. So I'm going to do what I can to save a couple bucks here and there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked this video. You guys take care and like and subscribe.